Hey, this is John Young. We are going to be replacing an old toilet with a new one. This is an American Standard Titan toilet here that we're going to be replacing. It is the tall and it is an elongated compared to a shorter round toilet. Now, so far, what I have done is we, we wanted to paint this back wall. So we took the tank off and you see it's kind of dirty from uh, years of use. We took that off. And then the other part is I just replaced that water line and I put a braided, a braided line here. So that's the only two things we have done uh, for this is something we set the water off, flushed the flushed the tank, and then took it off, and then we had water in here, and the water was was quite full. So what you do is you take about a two gallon bucket, something like that, and dump it down. Obviously, I didn't have my rag in there, and what that does is that takes and flushes the toilet, and only left about an inch and a half of water, if that. So instead of having water way up here, it had it down so the water was about where the rag is. And then we use the rag to dip the rest of the water out. You can use a, uh, a wet dry vac if you'd like to, but now it's it's dry down there, which means that the trap is no longer keeping snow up. That's why the wet rag is in there. Next, our process will be to take the little nuts off down there and get ready to, we've got these little plastic caps down here and they should just pop right off. And then we're gonna be taking the nut off right there. And this is a little, looks like a plastic version and get ready to put this toilet in its place. So we're going to find a wax ring down there on the floor and those are not to be reused. A wax ring, here we're looking at this and this one came with the Titan and what they are is a little kind of a plastic funnel part. This will sit into the floor into the bracket that's on the floor and then the toilet will sit on top of this once we get it lined up. There's two options. We can use a wax ring or we can use a perfect seal system here. Now the perfect seal is probably going to be the route I want to go with this. And there's a couple of things with the perfect seal. First off, you've got the ability, if it's if it's a, a system where it's a little bit higher and you need to have more seal, you could, some people have doubled wax rings. They make extra large wax rings. Or we can go to something like this where this will actually sit down over the bolts, the flange bolts. This will push down in there and you can see that there's a little that little black in there, the black plastic, that will become, as it squeezes down, that will become the piece that goes into the floor to be that chute. And then this will seal to the toilet, the wax will seal around everything once it's all compressed down, and we'll be good to go. If for some reason we were needing more space instead of getting with an extra large wax ring, we could use this adapter in there to have a, a configuration for a toilet that's up off the ground or where this is recessed more. But for this, we shouldn't need this, we should just need this, or we can go with a standard wax ring. But the important part to remember is you can't reuse a wax ring. So let's take those nuts off and get that old toilet out of here. So I wanted to kind of show you this. This is right after the stool was removed. I've got to take those plastic little bolts out and clean this up because right now uh, that has got sewer gas that is coming up into the house. There isn't a trap. So we're going to get on this really quick. And uh, of course, if it's going to be out for very long, we'll probably put like a little the plastic bag or something into the into the hole to keep that smell from coming up into the house too much. So we got to clean uh, clean it pretty well. It took almost a half a roll of uh, paper towels. Basically, there's not a lot of cleaners you can use. You can use it as an all-purpose cleaner once you know get the the outer edges. But the wax it just becomes elbow grease and uh, the paper towels and scooping it off and, and kind of doing that. Um, then then we're gonna put these toilet bolts in. They're going to go into the flange, one on each side. They just slide in like so, and then there's a little cover that goes on it, and that little kind of kind of a nipple here on the side goes up. And then you just put that on there and tighten this down, which I'm going to do off camera because I already did one so you can see it. I just don't want to drop it down the, uh, the sewage line. Now being that the plumbers put this flange in so much higher than I expected, I'm not going to use a perfect seal. I could use that, but I'm just going to use a standard wax ring because I'm concerned that this toilet and that flange may not work. So we're going to use just the cheap wax ring because if it fails, then I have to, and I have to do something different. I'm not out, uh, not damaging that perfect seal because once you've used it, it can't be reused. Unfortunately, you can reset the toilet, but you can't quite reuse it. So we're going to go wax ring and see how that works. So when we go to put the wax ring on, we take the wax ring and we kind of just turn it. So it kind of adheres to the toilet in line with the waistline. Then we'll pick the toilet up and put it right on top of those two bolts, the two, and we want to try and make sure that they are to the sides. 
and it will just lower the stool right on. Some people will put the wax ring on that first and lower the toilet. This is the method recommended by the manufacturer, so that's what we're going to do. Now the toilet is just sitting. We just placed it on that flange and got everything lined up. But you can see that the back is up about, oh, three eighths of an inch. We're gonna press down on the toilet. Basically, I'm going to sit on this part of it right here. We're not going to use the bolt and try to tighten those up to pull it down. It's gotta be pressed down and then the bolts basically just hold it in place. So let's see if that will work. So I put the little nut, they're plastic nuts and they're meant to be hand tightened. There's really no way to get a wrench on those, thankfully. And that, and between the weight and such, it brought it down a little bit, but not to the point where it was completely uh, flush on the floor all the way. So what I did is I used a couple of these plastic shims right here. I've got one here I put uh, on the both sides. And you can buy these at pretty much any big box store. The Mighty Wedge is what they are. And I like these for this type of application more than a, a wooden one because a wooden one just wouldn't work. But this will allow us to to go and shim that and, um, and, and keep it... Uh, in one place. So that's what we used under that. And then you can do something like an instant trim, uh, instant trim around the toilet if you want to. That way it will be all cleaned and have a nice finished look to it. But other than that, um, tighten it by hand. Uh, you can see that there's still a little bit of, of uh, wax that's squeezed up through here. So I'm just going to get a paper towel and wipe that up. And again, it's just a an elbow grease type of a thing. It's not, there's no chemical to clean that off. Then we'll be ready to set the tank. That's our next part of this toilet install. As long as we're down here, let's uh, let's take a look at the little uh, trim caps. Now, in the old the old ones, you'd sometimes have to cut these brass these brass bolts and then put the uh, things on. Well, you don't have to do that anymore. Once those little handles are on there, you can just literally go and snap those on, and you are good to go. So I might as well do that while we're down there. So we've got the bottom of the tank here. There's a couple of things we're looking at. We're looking at, of course, this will go into the center of the toilet right there. And you saw the two holes up there, and that's where our, our two bolts will fall through. Now this on the Titan, they have got a little a little retainer to help hold them in the place, which is yay, rah, rah. This little gasket, and it fits right over, and we make sure it's all flush and, and fitting on there nicely, and just kind of do it a little tough to do one-handed. And I'll get that seated on there better because it's not seated down here and around. Then the other part is we're going to have a couple of nuts. We'll be going through the toilet. Then on the bottom of the, the toilet coming up, we'll be putting this little plastic washer on. And then we'll be putting this little nut with a built-in washer on it on that. So it'll be the toilet itself, and then this, and then this, and then we'll tighten it. Now, we're not going to be tightening it super, super hard. We're going to be using their little hand tool here because if we go and use a ratchet on this or a socket, we're going to break the porcelain either here or we're going to break it on the on the uh, base part of the toilet. And we don't want to do that. Now, while we're here, I wanted why we went this particular with the Titan from American Standard. This has an insulated tank. Now, in our climate, we're in the northern climates up here in um, Minnesota, and we also have well water. That means that our water temperature is generally somewhere around that 50 degrees all year round when it's uh, coming into the house. So if you have a time in the summer where you're having the toilets flush two or three times in a row, the sweating that will happen because of the tank will be pretty impressive. So that's why we went with an insulated tank for this bathroom because this is a, actually uh, one that the children use a lot, which means that the toilet is getting flushed numerous times a day. So let's get this tank set up on top. And the final part, by the way, that's the water line coming in, and that will hook up right over here to the water line. Now, this is plastic, which is fine. That is metal, which is also fine. But because that is a compression, it has a little gasket inside it. Let me show you that. We don't need to use Teflon tape or anything. There's a little gasket. That black gasket right there will, be, will draw up and touch this and seal up. So we do, don't need any Teflon tape on either end of this braided line, because that was also a, a, a gasketed compression fitting down there. Gasketed there. Into this, our nuts and things, make sure this is seated properly, line it all up and we're good to go. So let's put that tank on. Now the tank is on and I've got the bolts dropped through. Now you see there's quite a bit of a gap here. We're gonna be tightening this down and it's gonna suck this down to where the porcelain is touching all the way through here. So we do, that's why we have to make sure everything is lined up so well is because we don't want to have anything that would cause it to snap. 
but we're going to be tightening this and we're going to tighten it basically a few here, a few here, and kind of work our way back and forth to draw the tank down so it's touching and touching this. And once it basically is touching, that will give it the, the stability and it will be pretty much ready to go. All right, you can see that it seated very well. It's nice and tight here. Take a look at this. It doesn't move. It is all uh, connected now. You got to go back and forth though. You do tighten it up. Don't get it so it's touching here. You get it. You get it close. And back and forth, back and forth, with maybe a turn, and then you go to the other side. You got to bring it down so that this little gasket we were looking at before becomes a pivot point. You don't want to tighten this up too much. And then when you go to tighten that side to bring it down, that it snaps something. So a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, bring it down. And then make sure you can see when it's making contact, that's when you kind of then kind of give it the little wiggle test to see, is it wiggling by itself or is it connected tightly across here? And once you get there, you're pretty much done. It's no cranking it. You're not going to you know, give it an extra half a crank because that will snap the porcelain. We're going to add the, attach that water line on the other side now. We're going to attach the water line. We've got our little spot down below here. We get the water line lined up nice and straight. And you can see that it can have a wrench turning it, but we don't want to do that for a while. We want to go and just start it by hand and get it threaded on there. And it's a little bit difficult because this hose is is kind of catching and bending and putting some unusual pressure on it but we want to take it on by hand and then give it once we get to the point where we can't turn it anymore with our fingers then we'll get the wrench and then give it a little quarter turn to seat the gasket that's in there to get that gasket pressed up against this plastic little threaded threaded pipe here that feeds the toilet so the final step is to put the seat on and then we'll be able to water test this is the seat that came with it, and it's okay, it's functional, but it's not the one that we would... We're going to put a bidet on this down the road here uh, shortly. We're going to have to get one of those ordered up. But this will go on, and it's really quite simple, is we just put these little... Put these little... Uh, take, take the nut off, put the bolt through, so it comes through that hole, and goes down through that hole. There isn't any self-centering or anything to that effect, like there are in some of the slow-closed slow toilet lids we put on. This is just, take these apart, bolt it on. Let me just flip this over. This is just a, a flip up and off you go. There's really nothing fancy with this seat whatsoever, but it's functional and it'll work until we get the other seat, the bidet, to put on this. So there really wasn't enough room to swing those little nuts that were on there. So bladed screwdriver from the top, tighten them up. That way it could hold the seat in place. And the lid is on. We turn the water on and then we let it fill up. Now this particular toilet does not have the old traditional float that we would have. It has a little device over here that will be the float. That is the shutoff. And it's going to fill. And again, this is a lined tank. It is a styrofoam liner. And that's going to be used where you have well water, um, more than you would city water, because city water generally isn't quite as cold as well water, which in our case is about 50 degrees, 55 degrees as it comes into the house, which means sweating on the tank. And now the moment to give it a test. There we are. And the lid that comes with it is kind of a slow close, a version of a slow close. But that's it. The toilet has been replaced with a new Titan, uh, American Standard Titan unit here. If you have any questions or anything, put that down in the comments section. This is John Young. Thank you for watching. For more tips and how-to videos, go to weekendhandyman.com.